It's fate time! Hello and welcome to another video review. Today we're gonna have a look at the Figma number 515. It's Alter Ego Okita Soji in the Alter version. That's two alters, but that's one time it's the Alter Ego class and the other time it's the Alter version of Okita Soji, which is like a, you know, evil alternative. This has been a release that I'm sure a lot of you are waiting on and myself as well because she does for a great design, has like the great black and gold outfit, the white hair, and just really something, just overall the design is really loaded, and it does for a great figure. I mean, look at the great detail in the sword and whatnot. So, you know, why can I, why do I sit here and look at the pictures if I can't take her out and look at the figure? Let's go, let's do it. Hey, have you subscribed yet? You should really do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Why don't you do it? What are you, coward? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it! Thank you. Trying to ever stand up without the base is pretty much impossible due to these plateau shoes, but you know, that's why you have a base. Let's have a look at size. She stands about 15 centimeters to the top of her head, which means we are going up to six inches tall. Size comparisons. Here's Jolter, Mashu Kiridaito in the Ortinax version, Neka Michelangelo, SH Fig Art Son Goku, Cooler and dark side. And on this episode of Fate Waifu of the Week, we got Okita with I, I actually love this the the alter design in general. And uh, for this one in particular, looking at the face gaunt, it really fits the character oh so well. Because first of all, of course, you have the dark skin, the white hair, which in contrast will looks great. And then you have the somewhat empty eyes. Uh, somewhat angry also, but you know cold in a way and it, again fits with the uh, the idea of her being an alter version The hair is quite crazy have some uh, Red kind of ribbons in there not really ribbons and an actual ribbon black ribbon in the back and look at all this crazy hair Going on for this figure most of it is soft plastic, but the lower halves are movable So it does take up some space, but it does look very impressive in your display and uh, you can move it around which we'll get to once I have a look at the articulation but let's stick with the design of this figure and I'm zooming in on the boobs fan service ahoy we got them pretty big boobies which uh, have a little bit of clothing wrapped around it but do take up uh, a big part of the chest area and just uh, really one of the focal points of the figure yes I say that I know uh, you know, you might call it perverted, I'm just uh, I'm just being a man of culture. And, uh, I mean, it's fate, alright? It's fate. Just calm down. Anyway, you have the gold in the collar and the shoulder, pa uh, shoulder parts and some more red ribbons going down from the chest area. And, you know, with fate and paint, we usually have some issues a lot of the time. And I've heard stories, I've seen pictures, uh, a lot of people having quality control issues. For me, one time, at least it seems like it's good for the most part. I do have, I do seem to have a tiny bit of bleeding on the gold over here, but uh, it's not really much to complain about. But yeah, so you have the gold obviously molded on there, and this one's just plain out, and then on the collar it's once again molded. So it does, you know, elevate the figure a little bit. And then you have uh, a whole kind of like bit of a samurai aesthetic in her arm pads, forearm pads, and the gloves have a little bit of red on there, very nicely molded, very small detail as well, have a little bit of bleeding in the black with the hands, but not really an issue. Then you have somewhat of a, I'm not really calling it a corset, but whatever's going on over there, it looks again a lot more old school Japanese. And so can I just say like the contrast between, in general, you have like the black and gold, a little bit of red, and then you have the white and the brown skin tone, it's mwah. I think it does a very good job, and maybe that's one of the reasons why they picked this for a four figure. I don't know what the uh, what the um, what the process is behind uh, Good Smile picking these these fake characters or figure uh, figures because there's like a million. But I feel like this one is a very good one. It does have a good presence to it, and the white in her overall outfit, the uh, the skirt. Okay, it's more like a not really a skirt, but more like an overall dress or more like a coat. Also in the back, there's some more gold, the same symbol as we had on shoulder pads. And moving down to the thighs, those don't lie. And it's Pansu time. It's just a black Pansu, the classic stuff. You can kind of peel 
this one back a little bit, but you know, there's nothing in there, there's no extra detail on it. Then we go down to, I want to say stockings, but again, it's not really stockings, it seems like uh, big boots, like a little bit of armored boots, which have some more old school traditional Japanese vibe, and the insane crazy heels on there, again, more like a, more like a geisha thing, I remember that, like more traditional stuff. It looks good, but of course, you know, um, posing this figure without the base uh, is pretty much impossible with this. I mean, if you can do it, maybe you can kind of use the hair, which, well, it doesn't go down enough to really use the hair as posing for that. So, you know, you're gonna have to use the base if that's a problem for you. Tough luck, but it is what it is. So, for the articulation, I was just trying to stand up real quick because my back kind of hurts, so it looks a little bit different over here. So, overall, the hat tilts back and forth does go side to side and it does also go all the way around and of course as I mentioned the hair this one is all soft plastic so it does move out of the way and you have the hair on these ball hinges so that goes up quite far actually a lot more than I expected but also be careful not to break anything off those are like very fairly small ball hinges in there so you do also rotate that to a certain degree I think you can try to lift this up can push it and move it back in yeah so it does move basically all the way around and also i didn't even notice that part is once again connected to another ball just very small but you can also rotate that so you do have some uh, some lenience i feel like with the hair get that out of the way and make some cool dramatic poses with it but it will also get into the way obviously it drags the head back with all the baggage she kind of has in the back over here so you know be aware of that when trying to pose her it's gonna be a little bit frustrating maybe with the hair and the hat kind of dragging it down so you know that's the thing then you have the shoulder you can rotate that in on the socket that goes into the chest area and uh is this one that i feel like it's one that you can pull out a little bit also you have a swivel can rotate it over there and bring it all the way up on the ball hinge then you have the simple ball hinge in the elbow bring that up and down and another ball hinge, very small ball hinge for the fist, rotate also all the way around. Chest area, the big boobs really prevent her from moving forward, does tilt side to side. And it does not really go all the way around, I guess you can kind of try and push it, but I don't want to rub the boobs against the rest of the torso so much. And uh, you know, that's a, that's a weird sentence, but anyway. I'm not afraid. Then you have the coat or the jacket or whatever you want to call it. Again, it is on ball hinges in the back over here. It's nicely hidden and also we do get some fan service. Do have a butt in there, which we didn't have a look at, but there it is. Um, you know, obviously the problem with it, it's kind of really moving out to the point where it's hard to keep up with this. But then again, if you would have made this just another panel, it would have probably looked weird and you had it cut up over here again and it wouldn't really accomplish anything else that it doesn't already do. So really having to line it up, it does kind of work. You can play around with it a little bit and I feel like it's long enough over here and you just give it a little bit of a pull and you can not try to line it up. So there's some options with that. The lower hip part obviously can rotate freely around under the soft plastic over here which is cut up. In on the side so you know it gets the job done lag moves forward lag moves out to the side and it does move to the back rotation also in there got the uh, simple ball hinge in the knee which uh, once again problem with this I feel like you should have had this cover up the knee but then again they didn't do it so unfortunately and for the feet you have a long peg in there which is fairly easy to pull out but I guess it's not gonna be an issue you can rotate it a little bit side to side it is just on a ball obviously you're not gonna do much more of it and you can also move that one around but again i feel like it's obviously just for posing that's for stability because there's no way in hell you're gonna pose it with those plateau shoes and for your accessories you got a bunch of good stuff and i'm gonna start off with uh i guess ice cream it looks like ice cream it's so small and i want to leave it in the packaging because if i take it out i'm gonna lose it so there's uh what looks like ice cream uh, anybody in the comments let me know why she comes with ice cream and there's probably some reason behind it in the game or whatever so you yeah, guys let me know um then we got the face gums obviously expressions you got like just a just a shy smile not too much which again fits with the narrative being an alter character and a berserker and of course 
you have the open mouth uh, battle face and uh, both of very nice models. you have like a little bit of teeth in this one I love that stuff then you have the hands you got like two open hands two holding hands for the sword and this one's supposed to be for the ice cream I think like oh this one's for the ice cream no this one looks for the ice cream um, but yeah you have these two kind of more flat hands and these two a little bit more open holding hands for I guess the, the hilt of the sword or like the, the scabbard and the sword itself. You have a bunch of options for the swords. Then you obviously have the base, you have this arm which just goes into this one. It has like a type moon FGO stuff, all that. It's always with every Figma and then you have this little pin and also this replacement for the hand if you got if your hand joint is broken and then you got the big stuff the sword there's also the thing on the back which i don't even know where it is right now but the sword let me focus on that one real quick because it is chock full of detail and it looks absolutely beautiful the mold in the entire thing is crazy you got the gold you got a little bit of red kind of like an x in there and the sword itself the blade on it has the nice metallic going on and a little bit of red in the middle and also a side of black on this side well it has that on both sides I actually didn't even see that so much and then you have the sword inside of the scabbard which uh, has some more gold and black and uh, lots of detail molded detail also on the lower half of it and yes it, it's the entire piece once again basically but of course if you want to display her with the sword and an empty scabbard you can just pull this out and there you go you have these pieces it does not go in but that's fine i mean like i don't complain about that because that would just damage the blade so that's it final thoughts for this masterpiece is it a masterpiece i don't know it's a very good one though i as i was saying i love the design i love the contrast in like the dark and like the white hair and like then the gold and like the dark skin and then the white hair and blah, blah, blah. it goes back and forth Obviously, the big, big sword is also a huge add to your Figma collection in general because I know um, Figma, like at this point, I feel like the accessories sometimes are more important for Figma than the main figure itself. And, you know, having like a huge sword like that in your assortment of uh, your Figma collection definitely is a plus. But overall, I really dig the design of the figure. The paint shop on mine is clean, but as you know, I gotta warn you, paint can change from figure to figure their quality control is pretty awful has been pretty awful for a long time so every time i'm just gonna say it at this point every time you pick up a figma you gotta make sure that your paint is all right and if your paint is not all right then you still have the option to contact good smile or contact the store in which you bought it and uh try to ask for a replacement it it has worked for me in the past but i've also heard stories where people say well where good smart just straight up says we don't see any problem with the pictures you showed us so screw it you're not getting anything so you know that's just a disclaimer but the figure itself is absolutely gorgeous amazing uh, it's pretty expensive it's uh, i feel like it's a bit more expensive than your regular fate figures but like the fate figures in general seem like to be more expensive than the rest of the figma lineup so it does come at a price, but for Fate fans, I do highly recommend this one because I feel like it's an amazing looking character, it's a great design, and it's executed very, very well, and um, I don't really have anything to complain about it. So that's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever, Altada Ego, Okita Soji, once.